everyone, we are in Tinley Park, Illinois for the best time of year, the Tinley Park NARBC. All right, just walked in. Let's see what's new at this show. Ed and I were recently on the Late to the Mic podcast with Chase, Patrick, and Troy, and we kind of got off topic a little bit, and somehow we started talking about eating brown sugar straight from the bag, which is, is that something you like to do, Troy? That is the very best thing on the planet. <laughs> so we brought brown sugar. Oh, no. Oh, yes. For us and, and some spoons. We have spoons. Oh, my spoons. gosh. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> we're going to try this. I, I okay. forgot a spoon, so we only have three, so I'm thinking the three of us. I think it has yeah, okay. I know what brown sugar know. tastes yeah, like. You know what it tastes like. Uh, okay. The as I have a couple bags at my booth. <laughs> do, you, do you really? Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> I also have, I also have brown sugar yeah, bread at my booth. Oh, oh my man. gosh. We're going to try this right. and see if it's up to the hype. That's right. Clay, oh my God. Clay, All right. please. That's got to be a good um, spoonful. Is that like enough? That's good. That's okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, Chase is a little weak. Is that good? Oh, yeah. Emily, that's good. Oh, so Emily right. got a way better pull than okay. All right. Let's do it. Are we doing this? Yeah. Three, two, one. Best thing you've ever had. No, that's not. Why are your faces look like that? No, that's so bad. Why do you no. do this? That's so bad. It's, you know what? It's the light brown sugar. She no. didn't get the dark. <laughs> that is, I was going to say we should get the dark that brown sugar. That is so bad. Why that's would you so do good. that? It's yeah. a little much, but it, I got yeah. better. It got well, as, it, as it went down my throat and disappeared and the aftertaste went away, it got better. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> I, I don't recommend Patrick, that. Um, Patrick doesn't count. One yeah. to ten, I give it a six. It's really? not as bad as I thought it was. You know, I like sugar. Okay, I mean, I could go with a six. That's six? fair. Yeah, that's fair. I was a four. Four? Yeah, oh, God. A <laughs> it's a lot. It's well, a ten. Troy's a ten. Show it's us how you do it then. Yeah. yeah. For one, you got to dig in there and get the good stuff. Look at this. Oh. Dude, look at that spoonful. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, you can keep the bag. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. There's your gift. Thank you guys, that's awesome. I love this so much. Okay, Ed's now trying it. Let's see how it is. It's pretty much what I thought it would taste like. Huh. Are we encouraging kids to take a spoonful of brown sugar at home? Film it, send it to us. Yes. Then we'll send them all to these guys. Yes, oh my it God. does. Yes. Oh, please do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Film it, send it to them, and we'll uh, we'll also reshare all it on right. Late to the Mic. Oh my It'll God. be good. All right, so you know how we moved all of our racks to the new snake house and Ed did like a deep clean on all of them? Well. In the process of pulling out the big drawers of our bull snake racks, he broke three of them and has, and he can't figure out how to fix them yeah. with the yeah. rivets or something. I don't know. It's Ed's, Ed's project, not mine. Okay. So he is talking to yeah, ARS I, right now to figure out <laughs> how to fix these bins. Because I reached out to a company just to try and find the tracks because you can see the model yes. number on them and they said they can't, they don't carry them anymore. So I'm like, well, I'll just reach out to you guys and hopefully I can get some more. <laughs> is there any hope or are our bins I done think for? you're in good shape. Yeah. I think really? We're good. We're good. We yep. can fix them? Yes. We got a few thousand of them at the shop. <laughs> oh, perfect. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Look, he's getting a, a training course on how okay. to properly see? remove yep. the bins. And you got to make sure your inner track is up. Yep. All right. And you want to put it right inside that black part. I'll let you get in yours in okay. first. Okay. I'm in. All right. Now I'll get mine in. And you slide it in. Oh, oh you got oh. plank onto the glide. Oh, okay. Then, now push your, keep it up level. That's there okay. you go. Now push it in. There you go. Now you're good to go. Oh, right look at that. That looks so much in. easier. That, that was a lot easier than what I was doing. <laughs> Ta-da. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> It's the Zoom Ed booth. You know, yeah. we just had our Zoom Ed enclosure build off. Let's see, we've got, oh, we have Team Turquoise, Team Gold, and Team Orange represented here. Yeah. All losing teams. Oh, oh come on. That hurts a little, a little bit. Harsh. Some of us lost more than others. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's yeah. that. I didn't come in dead last. Any thoughts now that the build off is over? Yeah, so next time we do anything, I'm gonna build a tank for snakes because oh. snake, discovery. snake discovery There makes you more go. Sense. Oh yeah, and the video was released on International Women's Day, which That's we true. didn't notice until it was uploaded. Rig, rig, rig. <laughs> How, how did you come to a reptile show and find a green sheet? 
Oh, she's so cute, oh my gosh. If she disappears, it was me, I'm, I'm taking her. Okay, our meet and greet is about to start. It's almost 10 o'clock, but we just realized that we don't have any Sharpies to like sign things for people. So we're trying to find somebody who might have a Sharpie. For <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. I swear to you, I did, I did not put a Sharpie on the floor to like find. Does this belong to anybody? Legit a Sharpie on the floor? That was meant to be. Okay, I have a Sharpie. Okay, does it work is the question. Did someone just throw this on the floor? Oh my gosh, it works! Yes! We have a Sharpie for today. All right, we've got two minutes until meet and greet starts, but that means there's still a line in the hall, so we can't go out there yet. So we're just exploring a little bit and have some friends following us, and then soon meet and greet will begin. Okay, it is officially 10 o'clock, so, like well, 10.05, 10 yeah, but it took us a while to get out in the hallway, but now our meet and greet event has officially begun. And as you all know, for these big events, especially the NARBC shows, we have a dress theme, and the first 100 people who find us at the show in the dress theme will get a limited edition pin. And the theme for this show is tie-dye. So I have my tie-dye shirt underneath. I got a new tie-dye shirt just for this show, and Ed has a tie-dye shirt too. Yeah, oh, tie-dye. I love it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, this no, is gonna be no. really strange in Ed, front of kids, no, but. We talked about this. You have to wear pants when we're filming. Tie-dye. Oh <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Let the meet and greet begin. Okay, we're in meet and greet, and Sean and Chantel, first off, are in tie-dye. This looks awesome. <laughs> and Sean made this sign that it lights up. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh, okay, sweet. There's an outlet over we're here. here. We're gonna test, this is so cool. And apparently it even lights up too. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. So, Sean, this is your business? Yes. Whoa, okay, we have to zoom in on this then. <laughs> yeah. There you go, guys. Definitely go get something cool from Sean. What all do you make? Uh, we do custom logos, custom coasters, glass custom etching. signs, glass etching. Oh my gosh, and you have reptiles too? Yes. Yep. What do you keep? Most Mainly hog, hog nose. nose. Really? Oh nice! We may or may not have bought 18 hog noses so far <laughs> at this show. Yeah. <laughs> we spent way too much money on hog noses. But that's okay, you can never have enough. Yeah. Really now. That's right, we have to fill it up with something. And you don't have importation fees. That exactly. too, yes. <laughs> No problem. Go check out Sean's Crazy Customs. Oh my gosh. It's day two and we are so tired. We got like an hour of sleep at the hotel because yeah. there was like a domestic disturbance situation right outside our hotel room door. Yeah, our next door neighbors decided to have a domestic disturbance. Yeah, the cops and... were called twice. Yes. And needless to say, we got no sleep. Yeah. And we still have to do another meet and greet today. So I don't know how we're gonna have the energy. Oh, I don't know how we're gonna get the energy for today. I oh. How do we get, I don't know, too tired, don't care. Anyway, we still have to buy a lot of animals for our store and meet and greet and visiting with vendors and networking, all with one hour of sleep. So this is gonna be an interesting day. It's gonna be a fun day. We're gonna do great. Extreme Exotics, who focuses or breeds all sorts of species. Really, what? how would you categorize what you breed? So, mostly I focus on Australian species. Ooh, okay, okay. Kind of like this Bell's Phase Lice Monitor. Yeah, she is beautiful, and I have always been intrigued by the Bell's Phase Lace monitors, but I don't know much about them myself. We do have a big one down there. As you can see, it's not quite quite as clean as this one. So there is some that are just kind of a little bit less clean. It's they do turn pinkish as they get bigger. Do they really? Yep. See the tail on that one? I don't know if you can zoom in down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is oh. gorgeous. You're right. And then she pooped on Tim. So he handed her to me to clean up his hands, but now yes. I've got her. Oh, Tim's back. Okay. I'm I back. I can't steal her now. Okay. Well, but yeah, she is beautiful. Would you recommend Bell's Face lace monitors as pets though for beginners? 
No. No? I mean, why is that? Big enclosures, I mean, at least six foot wide, eight foot tall. Oh, really? I mean, they are arboreal. So how they big do, do they, climb. How big do they get then? Five to seven foot. Oh my gosh, wow. And they climb, so yeah, they, they need a lot of space. Yeah. What does their diet consist of? Uh, right now, mostly bugs as they get bigger everything. Really? They're not picky Chicks, at all? Chicks, no. Wow. And then you breed other species as well, right? We do. Yeah, what so, else do you have? So, the frilled dragon is one of our best sellers. So, frilled dragons, you have the Australian frilled dragons. I do. Yep, and you breed these regularly? Yes. Nice. And what makes these, you were saying earlier, these do make a good pet, right? They do make a good pet. Okay, and um, why is that? It's kind of like a bearded dragon, but cooler. An arboreal, yeah, an arboreal cooler yeah. bearded dragon, trop, would you say they're tropical -y? Semi-arid. Semi-arid, okay, yeah. okay. So we use a fogger on the bottom of the tank, Okay. but the rest of it's hot and dry. So if somebody has a bearded dragon and they're looking for something next, would you recommend a frilled dragon? I'd recommend dragon? a frilled dragon. Nice. They're very personable. All mine at home, they like me. Oh, but really? an employee goes up to them, they frill at them. Oh, so they can differentiate between people. They can. Nice. And it's not like in the movies where they're constantly frilling up, right? Or do they with certain people? Uh, they do with certain people. Okay. Cameras, phones, sometimes white paper plates. Oh my gosh, really? Well, it looks like another frill, frilling up. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Well, if people are interested in learning more about what you breed and what you have available, where can they go? Uh, Extreme Exotics on Facebook. Nice. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. Have a good show. Emily, jump on. The, oh, the pallet jack? Yeah, it weighs, it can hold 4,400 pounds. It might be able to help hand you. That's going to be, oh no, I feel like I'm going to break it if it can only hold 4,400. Oh, I feel it cracking. I'm going to stop. We are now with Patrick at Chimera. Hey guys. And Patrick has a ton of beautiful ball pythons at his booth. So what morph, if you have a morph, would you say you specialize in? Yeah, so we're actually a fairly large ball python breeding company. So we don't really specialize in one specific morph at this point. We have a smattering of basically every morph that's out there. You just can't decide on yeah. the morph, despite, you just love, love them yeah, all. Yeah, it's, you know, we have the space and we're like, you know what, let's just add as many as we can. And you know, we have 2000 snakes breeding. So we got space for everything, right? So just keep adding it. That's awesome. So when you see a new morph that you don't have yet, you're like, well, I don't have that, and you just add it to. Yeah, so normally that's, I try to do that, so my business partner is the guy who doesn't want to spend, whereas I'm definitely the spender, and so I'm like, we should buy it, and he's like, but should we, and then we buy it. And then you because, buy it, yeah. you know, I want to. <laughs> What's your favorite snake on your table today? Oh, it's tough to pick, but I definitely would be the uh, clown hypo pied. So it's a triple Ooh. recessive. Uh, it's a combination of clown, hypo, and pied, if you didn't get that from the name. Uh, it just brings out a lot of really bright oranges in the snake and kind of gives it a really nice lavender tone to the grays. They're just fantastic looking. And the pied pattern is incredible as well. It's gorgeous. Yeah, Thank that you. bright orange. What causes that bright or orange color? Yeah, so it's the mixture between the pied and the hypo. So even just hypo pieds actually have that really great pattern. It's just really? a really underrated combo. It's a combo that's been around for a long time in ball pythons. And so they're relatively cheap and it's great for, you know, pets and things like that because they're beautiful animals for a really reasonable price, actually. Uh, actually, I think looking through, the one that strikes my eye personally, yeah. I mean, they're all gorgeous, but this one over here, this pied suma, that one has been catching my eye this whole time oh, so yeah. far. What is the suma gene? Yeah, so suma is actually a homozygous form or a super form in the ball python world for mahogany. For a long time, we had black pastel and cinnamon and we'd mix it into pied and we'd make these black snakes. The problem is when you mix those genes, you get a lot of birth defects and they die and they don't really survive. What we found is mahogany can be mixed together and you get a snake that's really, really, really dark, almost black, yeah. Um, but you don't get nearly the birth, uh, birth defects. Okay. And then we can actually throw like one copy of black pastel or cinnamon in and get like a black snake. So it's a building block for like a really black, dark, uh, white snake. It's really cool. So you get that nice black and white pied. So, so yeah. So I guess super mahogany would be the yeah, other exactly, yeah. name Su yeah. for suma? Absolutely, oh, yeah. suma, super mahogany. There it is. Yeah, we got there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we're being honest, guys, I didn't think about that until she just said it out loud. Either. Oh, okay, so, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, so that's great. Wow. Yeah, yeah, sumo, super mahogany. Yeah, that learn, makes sense. Learn something new every Look day. At, I did too. Wow. This is good. We both learned today. I think our genius is so incredible, it's scary. It is, it really is. <laughs> so, where can people go to learn more about your snakes? Yeah, so Morph Market is where we have all of our animals listed. It's in our store under Chimera. You can go to Instagram, Chimera underscore reptile. Um, you'll get to talk to me if you go there. If you go to Morph Market, you'll talk to Andre, my business.
business partner. Um, and then ChimeraReptile.com um, is our website as well. You can go there and message us from that as well. Right. Well, thank you yeah. so much. No, thank you for coming and hanging yeah. out with us. Suma. Yeah. Super Mahogany. Super Mahogany. Okay, we have been doing meet and greet for all day. It's been a lot of fun, but we have less than two hours left of the show. So we're gonna try to buy everything we need for our store before it closes. Are you, are you buying more hogs? No, we have a new building that has so much room. We need more hugs. Buy tons of hugs. No, 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 not at all. All right, so I lost Emily again, and I think she's somewhere down this side. Oh, there she is. Wait, she's with Scott's Great Snakes. Are you, are you buying more? Hey, what? what? No. What? Ooh, hog nose. What are you doing? Nothing. Are you buying hog noses? No, you're buying hog noses. Okay, we have 15 minutes until the show is over. People are already starting to tear down, so we've got to hurry. We still need a couple things. Yes. Would you? Oh my gosh, is this number 20? To get it. It was a weird number. Yeah, we couldn't just stop at 19 we hog noses. So oh we needed my to gosh. get the 20th. This will pair beautifully with Voorhees. Yeah. A head snow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. Like super condas, and condas, yeah. snows, and high red stuff. We could get Yetis. Super conda snows. And super red. Oh my gosh. Good pickup. Thank you. Unfortunately, our microphone had issues and was going in and out for this last clip, so I'm essentially going to be narrating what we did cover in this clip, and then it'll go back to normal for the end of the video. But essentially, we got so many amazing gifts from you guys. You don't have to get us gifts. It, we just like meeting all of you and want to thank you all for going to the show and supporting local breeders and vendors. And You guys went above and beyond and sent us fan art and snacks and 3D printed goodies. I have my new favorite Evolutions mug now, and we tried to cover as much as we could or show as much as we could in this clip, so hopefully you see what you gave us if you did give us a gift. One thing in particular was this box that was not opened at the show at all, so we actually opened it on camera during this clip, and I was not sure what was inside, but we opened it up. It was covered in bubble wrap, and there was a note that said, I hope you had a great show from the family that gave it to us, which you guys didn't have to give us this bit gift, but opening it up, it was chocolate snakes, like really fancy chocolate snakes and they are now in our house I haven't opened them yet because they're so pretty I'm feel I feel bad eating them but don't worry I'll, I'll cave I'll still eat them at some point so thank you so much for the chocolate snakes we were also given a homemade snake plush from pink pig studios which was really well made so we wanted to give her a quick shout out for her small business and we were given 3d printed Pokemon which are so cute they look like knitted from printed playthings. so another shout out to that business too and I mean like I mentioned before, this is now my new favorite mug. This was so nice of somebody to give us an Evolutions mug. I've been using it like every day for coffee since the show. And if I remember correctly, the same family actually gave Ed some Pokemon shirts. A vendor also during meet and greet just walked over and gave us a mug that was from Husbandry Pro and there's some goodies inside. And we talked to Tom Harbin at the show about Husbandry Pro, which is an app at software to help maintain your collections and keep track of feedings and sheds and pairings and stuff like that. And after talking to Tom Harbin, and, you know, our friend, our hognose snake breeder friend, he was saying it's really easy to use, so we might actually consider using that at, at some point. But again, thank you guys so much for all of the gifts that you gave us. You don't have to give us goodies. They made wonderful road snacks, though, on the way home. I will admit we ate, or I ate a lot of them on the way home. 
And then kind of moving on to the animals that we brought home from the show, we got some uh, Peruvian red-eyed tree frogs, if I remember correctly, for our store. We picked some of those up for retail. We also picked up six beautiful blue tongue skinks that are high orange. Got them from a wonderful breeder who we met at the show, and those will be available in our store. For myself, I picked up this really cool little like desktop terrarium, and I think I'm gonna put some isopods in it and just see what happens. We also got this stack of beautiful gargoyle geckos of a variety of different colors, and these aren't for like our breeding plans or anything. Again, this is just for our retail store, so those are a nice pickup, I think. For snakes for our store, we grabbed some gorgeous corn snakes from DDB Corn Snakes. We love buying from him because his snakes always eat frozen thawed for us. They're beautiful, they're really healthy, so we picked up some more of those while we could for our store. And we got a lot of tarantulas too. This white bag that I'm holding plus two huge boxes full of tarantulas of all sorts of species we picked up for our store. So if you need tarantulas, guys, we've got them in stock now. Oh yeah, here's one of the boxes. There are hundreds of tarantulas that we went home with from Tinley. We were also given a huge box, actually two pretty decent sized boxes of what Josh's Frogs calls imperfect animals, which means that a frog or a tadpole grows up and it has a fused toe or a crooked toe, or maybe it grows slower than the others or slower than it should. They call those imperfect animals because they're not perfect so they don't want to sell them but they they have they can have great lives still so they don't want to like euthanize them because they're just have a slight deformity so they gave us a bunch of imperfect frogs dark frogs white tree frogs uh some geckos as well that although they didn't want to sell they didn't want to euthanize because they can still have a wonderful life so they gave them to us to adopt out via our adoption program so i thought that was really nice of josh's frogs to really want the what's best for the animals and if you need any imperfect animals that still are otherwise happy and healthy, maybe just has funky legs or grows a little bit slow, stop by. Maybe we should still have a few in stock. Actually, at the time of this recording, we do still have some imperfect dart frogs in stock that need new homes. Now that covers all the animals we got for our store, but what we got for ourselves, we broke a record, guys. We bought 20 hognose snakes. I mean, we have the new snake house, which means we have to fill it up with more snakes so we can breed more animals. So I got to have a little fun at this Tinley yeah. and I may have gone overboard by buying 20 hognoses. There's what? hognoses in here and in here and behind Ed on the counter. We bought about the same amount of hognoses now that I think about it. We bought, oh, I bought 10, you bought yeah, 10? Yeah, I think that was about it. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. so we bought so many guys that we're not even going to include the animals we got for ourselves in this video because we want to do them justice and give them screen time. We're going to do an entire video video on the snakes we bought for ourselves so that way we can go into who we bought them from why we bought those animals our plans for those animals and really give them the attention they deserve. So that's gonna be in a whole different video. However, we can't leave you hanging without showing you anything we bought for ourselves though. So we're gonna show you actually one snake that we bought for ourselves. We're gonna show them again in the haul video, the new snakes video. But do you remember Scott with Scott's Great Snakes? We interviewed him a couple of years ago about the new lightning morph rat snake that he discovered and bred and proved to be recessive. He was so nice in that he gave us, as thanks for the support in his lightning rat snake project, a pair of lightning morph rat snakes that he produced from the mail he found outside in the thunderstorm, which is why they're called the lightning morph. So if you wanna watch the video where we interview him and you kinda learn about the origin of this brand new morph to rat snakes, I'll put a link to that video in the description below so you can know why this is such a special snake. This is the male. We were given like a two or three year old female as well so she's much bigger and we're gonna show and we're going to introduce her to you in our video coming out for all the snakes we got at Tinley yep. but here is the male guys we had to show you at least one snake we got for ourselves and yeah this guy was produced by Scott's great snakes I've had to show you at least one but thank you everybody so much for watching thank you everybody who wore tie-dye and just everybody who said hi to us at the show we love meeting all of you even though at the end of the show we're kind of busy and trying to buy everything for our store also Ed got plants oh yeah I got uh, a monstera and a ring of fire and a whatever that one is. Can't remember. This one was an auction pickup. Wait, what are you? Doesn't say. Uh, <laughs> it's getting into plants. Yeah. I have right. these three. <laughs> I, I want I want a white monstera. Look how cool it is. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support as always. And stay tuned for the video showcasing all the snakes we bought for ourselves. Uh oh. We don't have that much space left. How are we going to fit all this?